Clay Travis, Buck Sexton Show. Appreciate all of you hanging out with us. We are now joined by the Attorney General of Arizona. He is fighting battles every day uh, for so many people out there in the state of Arizona, including in Phoenix, where we have one of the biggest audiences listening to radio in the country, number one in that market. Attorney General Brnovich, let's just start right here. If and when Title 42 is no longer in force, what do you expect to happen in the state of Arizona, and what are you trying to do to fight against the repeal of Title 42? Well, a tidal wave of destruction will impact our southern border, and it's got nothing to do with climate change. And don't just take my word for it. The Biden administration themselves have said that we will see 18,000 people a day trying to legally enter our country. Now think about it. You got the basketball playoffs going on right now. That's like the equivalent of one of those arenas every single day illegally entering the United States. And you're talking about the price of drugs dramatically falling, uh, impact the social welfare system. Literally, Americans will die and our country will be forever changed as a result of the lawlessness at our southern border. Title 42, as you guys know, is one of the only things left for making this crisis even worse. And that's I was very proud to lead the charge. Our lawyers were in federal court arguing that the Biden administration cannot rescind Title 42 at this time. So, uh, A.G. Burnham, appreciate you being with us. What should they, put aside what they will do, because I think we all know it's going to be a disaster, but what should they do? Meaning an extension of Title 42 until when and until what measures are in place right i mean that's one part of this discussion that i don't because you can't have title 42 forever right at some point one would think this this authority would would have to expire realistically so i mean do, do we have metrics for when that should be and what needs to be put in place so that it doesn't result in the flood of illegal crossing that everybody's expecting right now well once again put this all in context is that title 42 can't be looked at it is is in isolation you're right it was a common sense public health policy but it's now one of the only tools law enforcement has to deal with the historic border crisis so this didn't begin and end with title 42 i mean this began literally on the day joe biden was inaugurated when he stopped building the border wall and we had to sue him over that when you remember when he implemented that what they call temporary and it was permanent guidance where the biden administration refused to deport people deportation orders more than a million people in this country including people being released and from prisons and jails we had to sue them over that and there's been ongoing litigation i was at the u.s supreme court in february arguing when the biden administration tried to rescind the public charge rule where they want to give government benefits to non-citizens what i call the incentivization of legal immigration so the problem is is what we have seen over the last year and a half since joe biden took office is a systematic attempt to undermine the rule of law and to undermine all not only literally statutes but to undermine policies and and formal government rules that were implemented that were actually having a real effect on illegal immigration so yeah title 42 is one of the only it's just one tool in the toolbox it wasn't meant to be um you know permanent but i think we all recognize that if joe biden kamala harris sector mayorkas revoke title 42 at this time he is setting up the southwest for the biggest invasion since the alamo what are you seeing on the ground in Arizona as we get basically six months out from the midterms? What do you expect for Arizona, which is a huge battleground, to look like come November 8th? Well, as someone that grew up here in Arizona, um, you know, and I've lived here, I still live in my same neighborhood I grew up in, is people want security. It's all about security, and that means border security and economic security. And folks here, you know, wherever they, they live in the state, recognize that whether it's at the gas pump, whether it's at the grocery store, or whether it's the gangs that have increased their presence in our neighborhoods, this is all a result of the failed po policies of Joe Biden, Secretary Mayorkas, Kamala Harris, and Cartel Kelly. And so I think there's a lot of great anger and frustration with what's going on. And really, when it comes to especially security, border security, I mean, this is when the federal federal government's at its apex of power, where the president is supposed to be protecting us and guarding us. And instead, we're not only seeing a record amount of people illegally cross the border, which strains our social services, we are now seeing a dramatic decrease in the price of fentanyl and the price of methamphetamine. And I will tell you, as a former gang prosecutor, we know as the cartels make more money off drugs, they become more powerful. And we know that more people are going to die. Someone's niece, nephew, son, daughter is going to die as a result of the flood of methamphetamine that's coming not only into Arizona, but it's also 
was spreading throughout the United States. And so we talk about security, safety in our neighborhoods, and we talk about the ability of hardworking middle class neighbor uh, Americans to be able to fill up their car with gas and not have to take out a college loan. Speaking to Attorney General Mark Burnovich for the state of Arizona, um, Mr. Attorney General, tell me what could be done to clean up the situation. I mean, you mentioned the cartels, you mentioned fentanyl overdoses, uh, 170, 107,000 overdoses, fatal overdoses nationwide last year. I'm sure tragically a, a large percentage of fatal overdoses occurred um, in, in Arizona as it's along the border. So how do you crack down effectively? How, you're talking about safety. People need safety. Uh, what would you do? Or what, you know, if, if you were to win a Senate seat, for example, what would you like to see change? Well, A, I'm going to win the Senate seat. And we need to have a realistic and holistic approach. And so one, we look at what's going on with our judiciary and even the Supreme Court, making sure that we appoint and confirm judges that understand the rule of law. And that they're not there to be policymakers, but they're there to enforce the law. We need to make sure that we are supporting um, our law enforcement officials. And that means making sure that, you know, we don't demonize them and that we don't try to stigmatize people that are just doing their jobs. And we need to make sure that we have the resources and the willpower available to enforce existing laws when it comes to our southern border. And so that literally means we've got to deport people with deportation orders. We have to make sure that we continue to build the border wall. We have to make sure that we're, you know, uh, especially the local level, the state level, as I've done as prosecutors, we want to make sure that people that break the law are arrested and punished and that we have a judicial system that, is, that enforces the law as it's supposed to be. And so I think that part of the problem we've had is that you send people to Washington, D.C. that um, just want to get reelected and they want to continue to grow the, the size and the scope of the federal government. And the next thing you know, we have the federal government, for example, involved in education and trying to ram critical race theory down our kids' throats. And that's not the role of the federal government. But when it comes to issues like border security and national security, that is where we need the federal government to focus its time and resources. Attorney General Mark Burnovich of Arizona and Senate candidate. Appreciate you being with us, sir. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, what about my walk-up music? <laughs> what would you pick? Oh, I don't know. Like maybe some Grateful Dead or Rush Lime like Kid Rock. Do I mean, you, you guys... uh, do you ever, have you ever gotten a, a cease and desist? Because I know this happens to a lot of politicians. Uh, when you're doing rallies and you use music that you like, but the politicians, uh, I mean, the, the, the musicians decide they don't like you. Has that happened to you or have you heard of that happening in Arizona? Um, no, but I think the key is, is you got to go with folks like Toby Keith, Kid Rock, or the Grateful Dead, where um, they don't get hung up on that. Or Licks, for example. Which is right. why we <laughs> missed <laughs> Mr. We know that they're going yeah. to love this music for yeah. decades to come. I was going to say, we can send him a playlist, but, you know, it's like I'm burning him a CD or something. Hey! <laughs> oh, burning for you, that'd be a good walk-up song, but yeah, maybe the Blue Oyster Cult would stop me from playing it, I don't know. So. All right, A.G. Burnovich, right, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us, sir. Good to talk to you. All right, right on. Thank you. Bye-bye.